Right, Philip, thank you for your time. Uh, really, really enjoyed uh, Boiling Point. Top cast, uh, technically superb as well. Um, so the, to start off with, it's a, a one-take film, as uh, is widely known. But come March 2020, we're about to go into lockdown. You are the last film filming in the UK. Uh, what was the discussion that went on um, that made that forced you to curtail the, the 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 shoot? Well, you know, we were luckily looking back on it now. We were supposed to shoot this in April, um, and that's because of Stephen's availability. And then suddenly Stephen became available in March, and we were like, he he had to do it then in March. So we're like, right, let's let let's all let's just scramble to March. Let's do March. And then when we were sort of rehearsing, there was these whisperings of, of COVID and, you know, we could watch it and it was coming closer and closer to the UK. And then, you know, the government was saying, oh, make sure you wash your hands and all that. <clears throat> so that by the time we came to shoot, you know, it was, it, was, it was quite a scary time really, but still nobody knew what was going on really. There wasn't any sort of like solid information. Um, <clears throat> and then there was these whisperings of a lockdown and stuff. And we were like, no, it's never going to happen. And then, and then we, we, we were in rehearsals and the last week of rehearsals um, we sort of started losing um, crew members and and some of the some of the, the supporting artists because they were getting incredibly scared because you know they lived with elderly parents or wh whatever it was so <clears throat> so we were I wasn't trying not to panic because because you know I'm, obviously I'm, I'm, I've got this mammoth task ahead of me and we all have but you know the producers behind the scenes were starting to panic <clears throat> and so we had the weekend off and then we came in to shoot on the monday and we were due to do uh, four nights consecutively and we were going to do we were going to shoot the film eight times until also we were going to do it over four nights twice per night so after the first day it all went great and you know it, it, we were it was like they were like almost like our dress rehearsals because <clears throat> they weren't they weren't perfect but I knew we had six more goes at it, so I wasn't worried, you know. I knew we were going to get it. Um, and then that night, the producers called me up and were like, dude, this is really serious now. You know, we are the last production, <laughs> like, shooting. Everyone else is shut down. We need to um, we need to make tomorrow our last day because the, the whole country is going to go into lockdown any minute. And so I was like, oh, God, you know, all right. So I didn't sleep that night. And then came in the next morning, and uh, and and we were like, "Look, this is this is it, guys. We've got to we've got to nail this." So everyone was on their A game, and 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 we shot it twice, and then we were we all cheered and cried and went home and got locked away, and then uh, you know we had to choose which which uh, which film, uh, and so in a way, you know, it was it was horrific that what we all went through. I mean, you know. We, everyone in, in the country, everyone in the world was going through something horrific. But, you know, that having that time in the house on my own with my family to just decompress and then watch the film, watch, watch four films back to back and then choose which one. It, I, I felt like it was the perfect way to do that because I, I had some clarity. Um, and so, yeah, so, so we chose the third one in the end. Um, well, I was just yeah. going to say about that. Um, you went for four. You did four takes. Mm -hmm. you went, you've got gone with the third one. Uh, was it a case of um, the third one was the one that you thought, yeah, this is the one? But to use uh, you know that that popular uh, phrase on uh, on film sets, let's do just one one more just for luck kind of thing. <laughs> um, what yeah. was what? Why did you not just stick with the take? Bear in mind, it's done. It's done now. Well, we knew that we had the rest of them. You know, we we always planned on doing two per night. And to be honest with you, the third take wasn't perfect. And I thought, let's do the last. Let's do the last one. It's going to be perfect. So I after the after the third take, I then went around everybody, gave all my notes to everyone, and you know, I was like running around the place like a lunatic trying to give notes to actors, and not only actors to you know, math, the cinematographer, to the sound team, <clears throat> and even like the you know the props team as well. So. And then I was like, right, we've got this one now. This is it. And then we did the fourth take. And technically, it was flawless. It was perfect. However, the, the performances were, were, were a bit flat just because everyone was exhausted. And it just didn't have the, the, um, 
the energy that 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 raw organic energy that the first take had. So when we come to watch it, I was like, we have to go with the performance. We always have to go with the performance because if the audience are, are watching the one take and watching, you know, the technical side of it, then we've completely lost them. It's that was that's a that's a gimmick that we've made a gimmick gimmicky film, and and that's not what we set out to do. We wanted to. You know, I wanted the audience to completely forget that it was a one take after five minutes or or, or even less, you know. Um and so 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 there was a there was a bit of back and forth with obviously Matt Lewis, who's my cinematographer, he was de desperate for me to use the fourth take because it was technically flawless. Um and we had a bit of a back and forth there, but but ultimately he understands, you know, that it's and we were able to fix some of the sort of the tiny little flaws that we had in the in the third take, like it was Small things like some shadows and um, some boom reflections and things like that, which you can we can paint out and things like that. So we managed to do that. Um, and one the one big thing was the, the the clock in the kitchen on the wall was the wrong time in the third take. And so we had to like that. My panic was in that for some reason. I don't know why I was focusing on this clock, but I was like, everyone's going to see the clock, and everyone's going to you know it's four o'clock in the afternoon. It's dark outside. The restaurant is so busy at four o'clock in the afternoon; it's just not believable. Yeah, and so we had to change the clock, and and that cost us a lot of money <laughs> money <laughs> to change it in VFX. But um, other than that, yeah, it was it was that was um, we were ready to sort of, um, and we were lucky enough to be able to do um a lot of sound design, all this, all the sound design, and all the grades and everything, everything the post was all we we're all able to do that remotely. Um, so the film we we wrapped in twenty twenty, in March twenty twenty, and we were. The film was ready to go, fully finished in August 2020, but no one was ready to take it on, you know. So if uh, you had four takes, um, if all of them had gone bent, gone awry for some reason, what was plan B? Well, plan B was, was always to, we've got enough footage to cut a film together. Um, I didn't want to do that. It's just not what we set out to do. And I would have been massively disappointed if we had to do that. But yeah, we had loads of, we had foot, enough footage to, 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 to make, to do the film, but to, to sort of use different takes and, and try and splice some stuff together. But that's not, that was not what we set out to do. Um, and luckily, you know, luckily we, everybody nailed it. Like everyone was so, I've never felt energy in the room like it you know since it's just you know you, you you come on set and if you do a good take or something everyone cheers and it's amazing and you know and then you move on to the next yeah. scene or, or whatever <clears throat> but with this it's like it's like watching you know a football match and then at the end your team wins and it's like you've won the world cup and it's like we got we got to the end of the of, so it, it was it was just euphoric like in just the most amazing experience you know and stressful like but at the same time it was all worth it definitely so worth it. with a film about uh you know the, the hot hotbed that is a kitchen who of the celebrity chefs have seen it i'm thinking gordon ramsay especially because of the film's title <laughs> yeah of course yeah well to be honest that wasn't even um i i only learned about that boiling point after we we'd sort of done the short film and named it and stuff yeah. And I was like, oh, God, yeah, Gordon Ramsay's got a series. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I know Jamie Oliver's seen it because he, he, he sent us a lovely message. He, he really enjoyed the film. Um, uh, I know Tom Kerridge has seen it because he, we did a little talk together and he absolutely loved it as well. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of them have seen it. Um, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things. I know um, th th there was a certain chef that, that watched it and he, he, wrote a, he, he wrote something on Instagram, which was quite... Which was quite uh, negative let's say let's say negative let's go with that okay. word um you know there are other words i could use but um yeah anyway he but 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 you know but but the i always say like the, you know chefs want to um want to you know look it's my it's my experience this whole film is my experience and what i went through in kitchens i, I worked as a chef for three many years that was my life yeah. And so it's not everybody's experience of kitchens. I totally understand that, but that's not what it's what I'm trying to get across. I'm not trying to say this is the life of a kitchen, you know, across the world. This is how it is. 
because it's not you know some kitchens are incredibly calm and really you know most kitchens nowadays they have like you know they're, they're really respectful to the staff and there's no shouting and all that kind of stuff and, and that's amazing but that's not what I went through and so that's not what I wanted to put down on camera you know so um, I gather now that there's going to be a TV series uh, as a, a spin-off or inspired. Um, yeah. Are you looking at that or, or each episode of that being a one take? Absolutely not. No. Are you mad? <laughs> no. Am I mad? <laughs> oh, God. Well, no, no, because look, there's there's only a, there's, you limit yourself massively when you do a one take because you can't really you know, you've got to be in real time and you've got to go on that journey. And, you know, we're doing it with the BBC. So each episode is like 56 minutes or whatever. Um, and yes, there is a world where we could do that, but I wanted to, and, and the team wanted to explore other characters. And, you know, because a lot of the feedback that we've had from the from the film, from a lot of people is, God, I, w- I, w- I really want to know what happened to that person or I want to know what happened there. And that was the idea that, you know, we never really, went into the feature going, oh, we're going to make a TV series, so just watch what happens. It was never the case. And, you know, I got approached by BBC to do the series, and we, we had been talking about it because we had so much fun and we wanted we wanted to explore those characters more as well. And um, and they approached me and, and asked me whether they'd be interested in doing it. So we went on the journey with BBC. But, but, um, but yeah, it's it's got to be... There will be long takes in there, you know, at times, because that's what you know, the, 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 the opportunity calls for it and the moment will call for that and we can be in the kitchen with the roaming camera, but but certainly not um not the whole episode, each episode. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, although um you have pedigree as an actor, obviously, where you've worked with Stephen in the past, but from a directing point of view, uh, going on, uh what's next up for you? Well I've I've just um I've just I, I did a movie at the beginning of the year which is coming out I believe in February. Um, and then I did, um, I just did a five part drama for ITV called um, Malpractice. And that was with Neve Alga, um, James Purefoy, um, Hannah Walters again, who's, who's, who's in Boiling Point. Um, uh, you know, some amazing new, new talent as well. So I just did all five episodes of that. And then I'm going on to do, um, I'm going to direct the first two episodes of Boiling Point and I'll do the last one as well. And then straight after that, I'm doing a movie. Um, um, we, we, I can't really say much about it, but right. okay. yeah, I, I nearly, I nearly said then who's in it, but um, yeah. So I'm doing that um, towards the next summer. So yeah, I'm literally back to back, which is I, I'm so grateful. I was going to say you're going to be uh, really, really busy, uh, Philip. I, I really enjoyed the film, uh, and thank you, thanks, so Simon, much for your time. Very great. Thanks, Simon. I really appreciate it. Thank you.